Happy Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for week six of the Dominate League of Risen Esports. Myself as Acolyte bringing you the play-by-play -play today. And who do I have bringing the color commentary this afternoon? What up, what up? My name is Fantastic Fat Man, and I'm here to go ahead and give you some subpar analysts. <laughs> uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> All right, well, we're jumping right into draft now, and it looks like uh, there was a little bit of a miss ban. We'll see if that's typed in. It is not. So uh, bans on blue side from the part of Tan, we have Ash, Gragas, and Graves seem to be a little bit of target bans because the meta bans are getting through. I see Wukong banned and no other bans right now, so it looks like Stunned Gaming just let a couple bans through. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they're going to go for exactly what they feel is more or less kind of like the threat i've seen ash be spammed a lot by faker kappa so i can see them just target banning that away uh plus it can get a little annoying especially with like the slow down the crystallized arrow coming from across map easy to set up uh let's see oh 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 they have a sub E sub. It looks like top laner, the top laner from Stun, looks like they're going to be uh, in. Uh, instead of Azirud Stanstorm, they're going to be bringing in ELYSG Platinum 1. So I didn't do any kind of looking for that. Uh, it looks like it was purposely done in terms of the bans of letting those two go away so that way they can leave up so many OP picks. Um, because, you know, basically Nico, LeBlanc, and Melio are the ones that are just automatically banned if you're red side. You have to ban those three unless you want to force going against them being first picked on blue side so if you just let three of them through you give one to your opponent you get the other two ops to yourself and you can make it happen yeah i mean that's a pretty good strategy that's bold move cotton <laughs> i wouldn't <laughs> personally recommend that i'll probably take out uh, out if you were if you were looking to go ahead and get the two best uh picks besides like the nico uh they didn't really go for the milia though so i mean was that even their intentions i would go for more of like what counters some of those picks that way you feel more comfortable picking up whatever's strong. Uh, Melio is still available. I'm a little behind because I unfortunately don't have the draft link, so I'm kind of going off of the stream. But what oh. it looks like right here, Nico picked up, very strong champion. Also, I see it's been used a little bit by both uh, mid laners. Uh, the mid laner that'd be the scariest to have it, though, in my opinion, is uh, it's Holy Banana. That's their, uh, that's their highest ranked player. And uh, in the mid lane, he has Kind of dangerous you already know what, what she could do if you're not really paying attention extra uh extra minion coming in in the wave go ahead and mess things up oh yeah. Maokai. Uh, I'm so, a big Maokai believer. i'm a big Maokai believer as well but you know coming through if you think about it long term nico gets banned from pretty much every game in solo queue every game in competitive so just how proficient is he on that champion um, I mean, I know it's not that hard for you to go invisible and just disguise yourself as a minion. Uh, we're going to test the math skills of Stun Gaming Eclipse today, see if they can count to six or seven. Um, but coming through with the second round of ba uh, bands, we have Braum and Thresh. So a little bit of those beefier bands are going to be taken out, forcing the support from TAN onto something like an Enchanter support. So that way they can hit that all in with the Nautilus and just that burst with the Varus. That's going to be a really nasty lockup combo. Yeah, most definitely. And some things that I've noticed from both teams, SDN might just <laughs> might just be going for just pure fiesta. They're going untraditional. They're probably gonna go for some cheese picks just because of the standings. Uh, TAN, they're they're undefeated since week one. Week one, they dropped the series 0-2 and they haven't lost since. And in the past four weeks, they've only lost two games out of their series. So they're a pretty big threat in my opinion. And then ha leaving the Nico up, I don't know. They got they they definitely have to have something in their sleeve. Lee Sin, aggro jungler, can go ahead and do the three camp, can go one side, can go camp into gank. You have a lot of versatility with that pick. Uh the Yumi picked up for the Kaiso. Uh, kind of like more aggressive champs. Just because a lot of the utility and the shielding and mages champs kind of got nerfed. I think Yumi's still kind of fine. Yep, oh, there's Emilio. I would pick up Emilio. A lot of engage on the other side it, it, it'll it'll definitely help out especially any knock on uh, uh, lockdown oh yeah so and bringing the in the gwen the, the the top laner from stun gaming i mean it is a sub this time around but still playing the same champion in the gwen is someone who can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe against these tanks like the maokai and the poppy 
Um, but Poppy having that ability to stop the engage and to stop the dashes from coming through on the Gwen uh, can do a lot to kind of self peel. Uh, as long as they don't feed really early game and they just kind of make it that isolated 1v1 top lane, just the, the famine, let it play out, let the rest of the map do its work, um, I think it would fully favor the Poppy in this instance. Yeah, uh, to me it looks like TAN just the gap the draft, to be honest with you. Uh, the, the Poppy kind of counters the least in, the Nautilus coming in. Uh, LeBlanc, her, hers isn't a blink either, it's actually a dash forward, right? Yes, she sir. gets popped up by the Poppy. Yeah, and then also uh, Emilio, anybody anybody gets locked down, he can go ahead and use his ultimate. He also has that super fire kick, super mega fire kick to go ahead and peel out Maokai. He could go ahead and set up objectives, whether he be topside or jungle. Uh, he could help uh, lock down objectives, basically putting those saplings in the brushes, damaging people, trying to go ahead and find their way over to the objectives. Kai'Sa scales, does really well into the late game. Uh, I would probably put... Uh, maybe the Maokai up in the top lane with Gwen rather than the Poppy, just so Poppy could go ahead and get a free roam and uh, she, she could get incredibly fast with that W that W Predator into like a <laughs> E into the wall, uh, coming out of nowhere, you know what I mean? That that that's always a surprise of Poppy coming out of the brush, especially when you don't expect it, getting stunned, locked down. I think it's like two and a half full seconds at first rank. Uh, it's pretty. I would say that's a pretty, that's a better jungler. Yeah. So I mean, as we're going into this game, you know, we are in week six, so we are going to be finishing up the league pretty soon. We're getting ready for the playoffs, and if we take a look yeah. at the standings right now, T A Nebula Tan for short, they're looking at four and one. Like you said, haven't lost since that week one uh, drop in the series. So they've been on a little bit of a hot streak. Uh, top four teams from the group make it in the playoffs, and right now the top five teams are all 5-0, 4-1, and 3-2. So there is still room for error for them to drop this series and miss the playoffs, so it's a definitely a must-win game for TA Nebula. On the other side of it, Stun Gaming Eclipse sitting at 1-4 and four towards the bottom of the league. Playoff picture is looking very grim for them, but you know, you still you come to play every single match. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, you you want to go ahead. You want to go ahead and basically make the most out of your time, and then obviously, obviously, you want to go ahead and win. Anybody who plays this game just has the has the natural instinct to want to win. I mean, you don't get you don't get that salty of a community without people who are actually trying to win and get the victory screen. Uh, but uh, what's it called? I, I I'm not sure what approach they they're, they're taking into this game just because of like kind of like what they did with the bands. But I mean. Who knows? They they might be ready for it. They might be on lockdown duty on Holy Banana. Uh, just just kind of just kind of I'm just kind of waiting to see because this looks like TAN all the way for me. You know, same. I can't really having not seen these teams play yet. I mean, you can kind of see what they're going for in terms of like the the Lee Sin and the LeBlanc. They just have all of this mobility, all this ability to make these picks happen, but that just requires so much control of your lane, so much vision control, so much objective control that if you're not going to be able to find these angles and to get in, it's going to be very difficult to kind of get through their front line. There's just so much to protect that Kaisa, and even Kaisa can protect Kaisa at that point. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, the the, the the only thing I'm praying for for STN is basically, uh, I don't know if you remember. I'm kind of an old man, uh, but uh, do you do you remember the T1, the the T1 game? Who were they up against? Where basically they left open Faker's uh, LeBlanc, mm -hmm. where he was like undefeated like the whole season, and I think I it was like MS yeah, and then they just went Morg mid and they had the answer for it and then just dominated them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I is that is this something that STN could possibly do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is LeBlanc the answer for Nico? Is like that something that uh I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna say uh, their name uh, in the mid lane. It's basically like the <laughs> the the characters. I think it's like a sad face. Yeah, I had trouble pronouncing that one too. We probably should have asked that before we started. It it yeah. doesn't even look like us. It's just a face. Right, it just kind of looks like a face. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say face. I don't know if uh, that's a matchup that face is very comfortable with, uh, just because LeBlanc. Uh, I don't know if Static Shiv is really the move anymore, but um, yeah, that might just be a comfortable matchup. Like, hey, leave the Nico open. Who cares? We're gonna we're gonna definitely be able to to 
take over there. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm hoping to see some 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 goodness from their side. Same here. Well, I mean, in the game of League, anything can happen, especially if you have a Bosch early gamer invade. So we're going to see for ourselves in about a minute and a half once we get through the spectator delay. So make sure you guys sit tight, grab yourself a tasty snack or beverage. We will see you very shortly, and we will be right back on the Rift. Stay tuned. All right, so coming in, we had a little bit of action while we were setting up that production. We saw the flash miss uh, from Awkward Tofu forcing the flash out of Holy Banana on the mid lane on the Nico. Yeah, uh, but do they yeah, know it's Nico? They oh, they know it's not Nico now. Oh, yeah, maybe. Once, um, actually, yeah, that's a good question. We have to go back and see. Yeah, yeah, because uh, basically he was he was Melio. Uh, the 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 Nico was was transformed into Melio. Flashed as Melio, walked off, and then could have potentially gone to the bot side. So it could still be pinging. Melio, Melio uh, flashes. Not sure. Oh no, no, they know it's Nico. It's, it's pinged. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> Wait, no, they don't. They don't know. Oh, 
Yeah, it's pinged his Mario Flash. But uh, in the meantime, the delayed invade, they have a hook onto his Dang. cuddling kit and they lock up the Melio right there. First blood going over to stun gaming eclipse and that's going to be a red buff invade for themselves and right away and pulling no punches coming from the bottom of the table and stun gaming go. looking to make their mark early on there we go <laughs> that's exactly i mean that's exactly what we were hoping they were going to do right just because of just the draft gap the, the draft was so insane i didn't really know what to say it was just pretty much like two plus two equals equals four <laughs> so tan looked like they had the mega advantage but i like that they went ahead and started with the invade they delayed it they didn't st they didn't they didn't step away and now varus has the lead in the in, in the bot lane now we got to go ahead and see if lee sin's gonna be uh basically camping the mid lane and helping out looks like potentially yes oh he's going diagonal oh yeah so it looks like we have brawls all over the map flash forward from a little griefer gets the dash onto l L Eli SG does not get him up against the wall, and Prison Mike, unfortunately, does not take his Dementor down. And so that's going to be a flash for flash <laughs> trade. Going to go back, TP back in to catch the wave. Uh, we saw a big damage on the Yippee Enjoyer uh, as well on the bot lane. And look at this level three into level two, actually, level two versus level two on the mid lane, forcing the flash away from EQQ. As Lee Sin is just everywhere at the moment. Yeah, I, I personally don't like that. If you're gonna if you're gonna basically camp mid lane, just go ahead and eat up the whole uh, eat up the whole bottom turret. Uh, basically, TAN's bot lane is behind essentially with that kill that invade that they did. So them rotating just hurts them more. So Lee Sin has the luxury to go ahead and eat up that whole bottom camp. The enemy team knows that they're in the bottom camp. If Maokai shows, they could go ahead and rotate just because they have that advantage. And it's such a deficit to TAN. Oh, already some action. EQ heading up. Is the invulnerability oh. going to be there? Sapling doesn't land. Actually, it does. It gets a slow. He, he gets the auto attack. Letting that red buff tick, tick, tick right now. Gets the dash oh. snip. There he goes. And Eli oh. SG with a 1v2 double kill. Taking it down. And we have a 3-0 at the very beginning. A 1.2 or 1.3k goal lead coming out from Stun Gaming right at the beginning of the game in the first four oh. minutes. Let's go. STM came to play. <laughs> I like that. They're being aggressive. They're not backing down. I liked how it looked like he was going to go for the Maokai confirm, but just dashed over to the Poppy. A little Gweefer went ahead and Gweefed it up just a bit there. He should have waited it out just a little bit, make sure that Snip Snip didn't come to his direction. But uh, a <laughs> incredibly well done by Eli SG. And like I was saying, Lee Sin should have just gone and basically done vertical jungling, and it would have it would have been so much smoother for him. It's all right, though. He got the Maokai flash, and then essentially it became a uh, misplay up in the top. No flash for the Maokai to get away from the Gwen, and Eli SG now has two kills from that. So, so far, it's working well. And, uh, oh, STN is vertical jungling. He's going into the Maokai's jungle. EQQ needs to be careful. Might advantage yeah. as well. Oh, no. They yeah, both have smite lands the uh, Bramble Smash onto the Raptor, is able to get that combo down to take out the Raptor. And then go ahead and back as EKQ finishes up the bot side of the map. And Lee Sin does have his cooldowns on his camps. He's gonna go back by and then wait for those uh, timers to reset. But meanwhile, on the top side, Eli SG going in again. He does have the double buffs available. Yeah, he does. He should continue fighting, to be honest with you. Oh, pretty good. He has also the slow. I don't know what he'd be scared of. The dash can go ahead and help out, get outside of uh, the Poppy's Q, the Hammer Shock, the second proc, basically nullifying half the damage just because it's like 90 90 with like the percent health. Uh, right there. Okay. So nice little trading Eli SG. I think had the upper, a little bit of an upper hand, especially with Poppy having corrupting pots. You kind of just don't want to let off of the trades. You want to continuously go otherwise they're just gonna go ahead and uh, back off a widow griefer is gonna just pop those corrupting pots and then walk up trade back off walk up trade and then that's basically playing into what what uh what a widow griefer started with and oh, oh here we go on the lane. bot lane yeah he goes forward lands a hook on emilio does block the leap you enjoy it but the third proc the blight takes him down so low cuddly kitten gonna be able to walk Kobe. away with 22 hp it does not land the arrow and faker kappa Stun gaming with the 2v2 solo kill at the bottom, and it is just lane dominance at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the kill advantage helped out. You went ahead and got the Noon Quiver. 
uh, help, help out basically just stack those life pack uh, uh, stacks. Uh, help <laughs> do a lot of damage. Nautilus kind of just walking up, understanding once the once that super fire kick or ultra mega fire kick, sorry, uh, is on CD. He has that advantage to go in. He just walks up, auto slows, then uses the pool for whenever they gain the distance on them, and uh, he's able to lock lock them down. Incredibly well done by STN. Oh. oh, look at this big damage in the mid lane. That's going to be one going down so far. Holy Banana takes him down in the 1v2 solo kill. Sonic Wave does land on the Holy Banana, but he's going to be forced to walk away unless he wants to eat a tower shot. Going on to the Nico. That's a very bad choice to go on to the Curious Chameleon. Yeah, the could have played it a little bit better. It's okay. Uh, Cubix wanted to go ahead and try to help out his mid lane face and uh, try, to, try to get a nice... Uh, take down up in the mid lane, but at this point since the side lanes are doing so well I would probably just keep focusing on them or just hovering mid lane make sure that the LB doesn't get camped and uh, Have holy banana be like their their saving grace for uh, TAN and that that way they could go ahead and keep dominating those bot the bot lane and the top lane since they have such a lead But no, it's all right. Just a minor slip up. I mean the gold isn't too crazy the, the mid lane Oh 600 gold difference. That's actually is pretty Pretty big, so I'll probably say maybe Lee Sin hover a little bit. Early drag is always nice. Hex Dig Drake helping with ability haste, and I think also attacks. So, not the greatest first dragon, but it does help out. And where is Nico? Oh, here's Nico as the little minion going back into the mid lane. So, they're going to go ahead and give this dragon at the very beginning. I said trying to snipe it out with the W does not find it. So, first dragon going over to stun gaming Eclipse. Uh, so if there's going to be any chance of like an Elder stacking going on, they're just kind of mitigating that. Uh, Werft Herald is available. It did spawn at the time they were taking it, so they could have looked a cross map at that instance if they were looking just to give the dragon. So a little bit of a misplay because usually you want to trade objectives when you're in that situation. Most definitely, TAN should have uh, the Malka EQQ should have gone for the for the Rift Herald. He has another opportunity. This is going to show here in the bot. Dredge line hits a little bit wide, so they're not going to be able to get that. But look at that wave, how stacked it is. So they're just going to keep zoning off this Kai'Sa right now, just keeping that hyperscaling champion behind. Went recall. back to Ward. Yeah, and so recall from the Lee Sin, so they're still probably a little afraid that Lee is still kind of chilling around. But just look at this freeze that Stun Gaming has in this bot lane. It is just massive right now. I like that. Oh! There's the ultimate. The death from below does land, but the ultra super mega fire death ball, whatever it is, kickball goes forward and does not hit its mark. And they're going to be able to turn this back around. He's putting down the damage. Oh. He does land the hail of arrows and it's going to keep himself alive. He's charging up the piercing arrow. It does land, but does not quite have the ability to execute. I thought he was done right there, but Kaisa, with that massive uh, lane denial and the minions, the X period disadvantage, did not have level six available, so couldn't keep himself alive with the killer instincts. Oh, unfortunately, they couldn't. Uh, that, that's not a fight you want to go ahead and take. Them messing up on that fight, that trade, they should have took the win. That was two ultimates. Just walk off. They didn't necessarily go for it. But I mean, at the, uh, they are behind, so you got to go, go high risk, right? So yep. that's actually wrong by me. You got to go ahead and go for that. But here we go on the top lane. We saw the uh, Nether Grass go forward, Ooh. and ultimates are used from everyone right now. Eli SG is stepping forward, sniffing down with Poppy. Lee Sin is super low. He can just get turned around and auto attack if Poppy gets there in time. LeBlanc goes, but it's going to be a 1v1. Here comes the Pop Blossom over the wall. Sets him up and knocks him down. But here comes the dredge line from Awkward Tofu. Lands and gets a kill for Stan Cubix or STN Cubix. Holy Banana going to be able to walk away. So overall, a 2 for 2. Not that bad of a trade if you're looking from the side of TA Nebula. Yeah, correct. You're, if you're behind, you going even is perfectly fine for you. It's keeping you in the game. Uh, also potentially getting some bonuses. I'm not sure if any of them went to the side of TAM. Potentially one from the from the Gwen. Eli SG, I think, might have had a 150 uh, bonus. So that is that's pretty good. I'm looking right here in the bot lane. Oh, they're yeah, potentially going for it. All that damage. Uh, the Killer Instinct is popping. Here comes the shields from the Melio, oh. but Figure Kappa is just going to sit there and knock him down, going one for one, giving a shutdown over to the Kai'Sa. But here comes the Ooh, Nautilus, going to whack away at him with the Acre, and we are in supportal combat. The <laughs> Death from Below 
is pops he's stepping forward cooldown on the dredge line is in two seconds one second not gonna be cooldown enough for him to be able to get that kill so overall a one for one in the 1v2 situation so Varish is sitting there and firing away little greedy to give away that cooldown you don't want to give kaisa away back into the game yeah most definitely you do not especially since it's kind of a scaling trap uh but uh did the kaisa get the the Oh yeah, definitely did got the shutdown. Okay, sorry, I thought I, might, I saw different. The Kaisa picking up the shutdown gold here in the top lane. Whoa, the trades are definitely going in the favor of a Widow Weaver. I just need to wait a little oh, bit, but here comes Holy Banana and EQQ. There's the Maokai ultimate yet again. Nature's Grass is going to land onto the Nautilus and Faker Kappa just stands in the way. Let's his support take it for him. Here comes the teleport onto the minion though. So Ooh. not really much of a flank. They're going to play this front to back. The chains do land onto the Nico. The Protobell is not going to be enough to get him away. Sonic Wave lands, but at least in. That is something you do not want to take. And he is Sonic Wave back into the depths. Awkward Tofu is trying to walk away from this. LeBlanc is here. Is going to be able to use the jump to get away. And Faker Kappa still alive. Does have his Corrupted Chains available if he needs it to get away. Going to pop the Ghost instead. And just forcing that fight a little too hard is Sun Gaming. Yeah, things are looking so good for them, but it looks like pretty much TAN's back in this. The Rift Herald's going to confirm. The bot lane, potentially? No, a lot of members are actually leaving. So, a couple plates onto the Kai'Sa, therefore full, uh, further advancing her. Uh, the Kraken Slayer already on the Varus, but Kai'Sa's going to go ahead and recall with nice amount of gold in her pockets. 1400, going to confirm her first and possibly boots. Uh... There in the top lane, also while the whole chaos was happening in the bot lane, uh, when solo, solo oh, died. Here we uh, go yet puppy. again. Death for below oh. from Aqua Tofu. Lands Killer Instinct going to be able to get him away, but Corrupting Chains is going to land onto the Melio. Here comes the burst from Freyka Kappa, and that's the fifth kill of the game onto Varus. Opting for the Kraken Slayer build, looking to melt these people in this front to back team fight. Yeah, I like that. I, I definitely like that with the Poppy and Maokai on the other side. Uh, you're, you're you're not really gonna have uh, moments where you can really poke people down with them in your face. So the I, I like the DPS route a little bit better. I always prefer the DPS route when it's on my team, uh, just because it, it helps bleed into late game a lot easier. Uh, you, we're, we're not pros. Late game is is almost a a guarantee past like 35 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I I always like the on hit better. Yeah, and it's just so popular. Like, Static Shiv is just such an OP item in this meta right now. You see it on basically everybody. So not getting baited by the meta build, keeping your wits about you to know, like, who are you up against? Who do you have to frontline? Um, I mean, we have so much dive on your team besides Gwen and LeBlanc and Lee Sin. It's all about kind of keeping yourself safe and letting the Nautilus peel for you. Yeah, most definitely letting the Nod, Nod disengage and engage. Ahead and allows you to go at it, it allows you to basically sit and auto attack. Uh, the quick the, the Kraken Slayer, though, I think it's a little bit of, uh, of a meta move just because a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, ADCs take that route where they go Kraken Slayer into their mythic. Um, static ship did get a little nerfed. Oh, they're in their jungle, though. I yeah, I thought they were. I thought they were going to wrap around and try to get the kill on the Gwen, but they offer the red buff instead. But here comes the 1v1, and <laughs> Eli SG is not going to be long for this world as he goes in the extended fight. But here comes Cubix oh. putting down the damage, flashes forward to secure the shutdown onto the Kai'Sa. And Melio is there, but Melio should not be able to do much as Nautilus finds a tree in the river. Twisted Advance lands onto the, the Nautilus, is going to try to keep him safe, but here comes Faker Kappa, and there goes the knock up the ultimate from the Nautilus, lands some damage, some secure damage onto the Varus, he's putting down as much as he can, and here come the auto attacks, is he going to be able to get onto a little griefer, he will, he's just stacking up that lethal tempo, just chopping down the tree like George Washington, Cubic steps forward, misses the sonic wave, but he's not going to be able to get the auto attack, are they going to look for the dive? Sonic Wave misses yet again, and he would be going pretty deep into the tower, so they're going to be able to turn away with more kills onto this stacked Varus, and that's going to be their key to victory for the rest of this game. Yeah, most definitely. They want to go ahead and play front to back, let Fake Kappa uh -oh. just auto, 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 stack the blights, and oh! Yeah, you seeing this? They're oh. going after the Rift Herald, but with no team for a backup. LeBlanc's not there, Nautilus is in base, Gwen is catching a side wave. I don't know what they were expecting here, but here comes the E forward from Yippie Enjoyer popping the ghost off of Faker Kappa.
Killer Instinct is still on cooldown from the previous fight, so he's gonna be able to keep himself safe. Yeah. Oh no, don't engage, don't engage now. <laughs> <laughs> Lands the dredge line onto the minion, so kind of putting himself in a precarious spot. Again, Yippee Enjoyer not having the ultimate or the flash to get on top of them, but Nico just pushing down this tower, forcing the flash out of LeBlanc. I uh, was going to land that root and pop the pot blossom a little prematurely, but just expected him to land that ability. And there's just so much pressure coming on the side of TA Nebula at this moment. Yeah, T uh, TAN, they, they they got the advantage on the side lane wherever Nico is. No, I don't think anyone can answer. Potentially the Glen, but the way it's kind of been looking is the the the, the, the Poppy the, the the Poppy matchup is sort of kind of going in the favor of the Poppy. So Widow Guifa is also going to be someone that they're not going to really be able to contest. Front to back is probably going to be the move they're going to have to start roaming around as a pack, in my opinion, and then uh, just just slowly push out sideways together. Where they're kind of all hovering at once and then also prolonged fights they need to make sure they need to understand that some of the skirmishes that they're taking are taking a very long time for them to fully complete and both sides to be either taken down or just walk or just have walked away and, and they got to understand the, the 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 gray screens don't last that long in this part of the game so them going for that rift herald is a little bit greedy but it's all right something they understand uh it's going to be a potential offensive move from uh, from TAN, so they got to keep that in mind when the next objective comes in, because Mountain Drake is up in a minute, and the Rift Herald can definitely confirm that mid turret. So it's going to be and something that they need to prepare for. This damage from Poppy is just insane. Just that one auto attack from the passive ability, but ultimate from E L Y S G is going to cut him down, just like a. I was going to say Jack Sparrow. I was going to say Johnny Depp uh, and the Barber. But anyways, they step forward, and here comes the pod. kick. <laughs> The kick from Lee Sin to open it up and kind of kicks oh. him out of the range of the Nautilus. But look at this, Maokai is in the middle of all of them. And Figure Cap is just standing in this ground to put down the damage. Pop Blossom oh. with the Protobell is going to land on multiple members. And holy banana, holy crap from him. He just decimates the enemy team. Kaisa gets the cleanup. 7-4 and four after such a rough start. And this game is just falling away from Stun Gaming. Is stun gaming is left stunned with a gray screen. They're gonna lose their jungle as TA Nebula steps forward in. They're gonna put down the Rift Herald, take the neutral objectives, and just further apply that Anaconda squeeze that you love to talk about so often. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I feel like in NA we don't understand fundamentals of League, and I like naming things <laughs> funny names so people can understand kind of like signature moves that basically everybody's got to do when they confirm gains or wins, Ooh. sieging, and uh, that's more, one of my favorites. Go lane by lane, Anaconda squeeze, slowly choke them out, and then go for the victory. But here, they're going to be looking for a fight? Uh, what are they? I like it, though. I like the aggression. They want to show that they're, <laughs> they're not just going to sit around and wait for the Rift Herald. The Rift Herald can go ahead and confirm that bot lane. They do not care. They want to go ahead and look for kills. I like the aggression. You know what I mean? High risk, high reward. <laughs> yeah, at this stage in the game, if you're just sitting and waiting for something to happen, that's not going to be a, a viable solution to get back into the game. So it looks like Gwen found the Holy Banana on a recall, forced the flash out of him, and LeBlanc uses the teleport to try to follow up and secure that kill, but just either a little too slow on the respawn timer, not able to get there in time. I, I thought that would have been the play, but the flash again, keeping Holy Banana safe, that is going to kind of help keep them safe from that long range engage for a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but what? I mean, it's it's kind of just back to neutral punches right now. Baron objective is up. We have a long time before the dragon comes up, and that's going to be our next big fight. Yeah, and then an open inhibitor in the bot lane, so it's going to go ahead and open up the macro that much more for TAN. But Holy Banana's been so smooth with that ultimate. It almost looks like he has snowball or something like <laughs> the snowballer ability from ARAM. He's just been able to really get into a perfect position to get multiple members into into that into that pop blossom. It, it, I swear, I swear, it looks like he just snowballs in and gets like the perfect, thing, uh, the perfect ultimate. But nonetheless, flash being down, like you said, takes away that long range engage. But they, they've kind of been falling victim to just her walking up with clones. So if they could fix that, then the flash would be that much more. That flash on CD will be that much more appreciated on the side of STN. But Blanc looking like they're they all oh, they switch. When? On the side of, with uh, with Nico and LeBlanc answering the poppy. 
Uh, Gwen looking to try to sniff him down, but here comes the Nether Grass from the Maokai. A long range engage does land onto the Lee Sin. And with that CC ability, that lets Kaisa use the killer instinct to get onto the back line. Varish just gets deleted, and there goes their big amount of damage. Kick from Lee Sin. Kaisa's on life for a little bit longer. Sonic Wave lands, but he's not going to be able to lock it down. And Nautilus is getting the shutdown onto the Kaisa. Here comes LeBlanc onto the backside, but they're going to fall Ooh. as well. And a botched kill. They just overstepped just a little bit. And the Maokai is punishes them so hard. And look at that. Varus did not even get hit by the ultimate. The fact that Lee Sin got secured by the ultimate allowed Kaisa to use the killer instinct to get in range of the Varus and just nuke him with that isolated Q. Well done. Incredibly well done. Just did the assignment and took out Baker Kappa, their only win con. Baker Kappa goes down. It's pretty much a wrap. They got to go ahead and just retreat immediately. But in the situation they were in, two members fall alongside Baker Kappa, and uh, that looks like a significant uh, point in the game where TA Inc. is potentially in the driver's seat and ready to go ahead and take the victory. Baron's going to be something they're going to look forward to. Uh, everyone's recalling. I feel like this could be a potential move, oh, setup for STN. This could be a p possibility for them if STN wants to go ahead and start clearing up wards on the side of Baron together and potentially set up a death rush, set up a kind of an engage where a roaming Melio, you know what I mean? In these lulls of the game, sometimes you kind of go solo into into darkness where you, you know what I mean? You should be you should be walking past, you shouldn't. And then you get caught out and now SCN is, is that much more into the game and having a little bit more me momentum or stopping momentum that TAN has. But uh, looks like they're just gonna go ahead and clear up camps, try to get gold. Because, you know, items, items, items. I love that little ward behind the Baron. It's so hard to click that if you don't have your settings just right with the mouse. But um, just kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, the way to get back into this game is you have to make use of those objective timers or just basically the tempo. When you notice the team is waiting a little bit too long after their team fight, you have to go in, you have to kind of take advantage of what may have been undiscovered, not warded, and just kind of shoot your shot, kind of catch them lazy when they're coming back out onto the map. Um, so, you know, basically when you fall behind is when you almost have to be your most aggressive. But look at Faker Kappa stepping forward a little bit too far. Ultimate does come out of the Maokai and is forcing the Ghost and the Flash out of Faker Kappa. So he's not going to be one for this world as the W lands from the Kai'Sa and he, Yippie Enjoyer just nukes Faker Kappa. Meanwhile, though, he stepped a little bit too far forward as Gwen gets a big damage. And we have an all-out team fight, ladies and gentlemen. People on both sides going down. Gwen is just snipping away at the enemy. Big root comes from Holy Banana, but so far it's just going to be a one for one. The 80 carries are the ones that go down so far. And with these neutral objectives coming out, Varus and Kaisa were big points of damage from both teams. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more detrimental, uh, detrimental for SCN. But it looks like they're the ones that are still setting up around Dragon and they're starting it. Oh, I don't know about this. And here comes the teleport. Look at Gwen on the flank is in a good spot right now, forced to dash away from the ghost of Holy Banana. And look at this a little Weaver goes a little bit too far right now, but it might be just far enough as they don't really have the range damage. Lee Sin needs to get in there to put his damage down. LeBlanc needs to get in there. Gwen needs to get in there. And there is just a wall of meat in front of them that stops them from getting the engage. And just like that, TA Nebula is going to be able to secure this dragon for themselves and possibly move on to this Baron, at least to be able to secure vision. I mean, the good thing about Varus is he has mixed damage, but Mountain stacking onto a Poppy and a Maokai is very, very bad for SCN. And then also on top of that, Yippie Enjoyer keeps on finding a way to take down Faker Kappa. So even if he goes one for one, I mean, he does have 10 kills. He has a extreme amount of damage, but uh, if he goes one for one, it's I still think it's more detrimental for SCN just because the Nico, the Poppy uh, can can basically out damage the Gwen, the LeBlanc, and the, the, the Lee Sin. For whatever reason, the LeBlanc can't really go in and get the combos and confirm damage onto any Squishy. And then Gwen kind of just got zoned out and then was forced to take paths that took too long for, for uh, Eli SG to come in. Oh, yeah, banana. Using that Nash's Tooth right there to take advantage of the cooldown timers, just taking down the damage. Look at that dash forward, trying Ooh. to put down the scissors, but look at this Pop Blossom goes up and sets him down. Yippee Enjoyer is there on the backside. And we have uh, two fights on both Ooh. angles right now. Yippee Enjoyer takes down LeBlanc as well. 
Leeson forced to get away as Maokai is just soaking all kinds of damage and Faker Kappa is just surrounded and he falls down as well. Poppy puts Nautilus up against the wall. So far, a four for one as Lee Sin is forced to limp away from the fight, and that's going to be a Baron for TA Nebula. Most definitely, a little Weeper is doing a good job trying to zone out the Lee Sin. Oh, Lee Sin, walk up, please. Oh, he's just up. Oh, okay, understandable, I guess. I feel like I feel like it, it, was, it should have been something. I mean, you're Lee Sin. Uh, you had the smite up. Uh, that's something that you got to look forward, uh, look, look, look for. Uh, but. Uh, Nonetheless, Yan confirms the Baron. They're gonna go ahead and potentially win out the game here. They're gonna go for their last recall, their last bit of items, and they're gonna just probably march it down mid. Uh, since Tan can't really answer, I think they can literally just brute force their way onto their base. Also, open inhibitor. That's a way they could go ahead and and uh, take down the Nexus. Oh man. It's up to Faker Kappa, honestly. If they could go ahead and peel out <laughs> Faker Kappa, play front to the nice front to back, it's uh, and they gotta understand Nico's pop blossom. They gotta watch out for the pop blossom, and they're going for it again. Yeah, we saw the W four, the ultimate to close the gap as well. But here comes the Sonic a resonating strike from the Lee Sin, forcing the pop blossom out of Nico. The clone is going to block the Sonic wave, but that's a huge engage tool that they just took out of uh, off of TA Nebula at that instance. Uh, Holy yeah, Baron does have teleport it. available, and look at that, the teleport is coming onto the bot wave. So now it's just these weird uh, chaotic team fights. We see the Killer oh. Instinct on the Kai'Sa goes forward, not going to be able to nuke the Barrage just yet. But here comes Poppy just tanking it up. DJ Enjoyer splashes forward to try to get the snipe, but it's not going to make it happen. And Poppy is able to knock the rest of the team away, so Gwen is not going to be able to get onto that backline. Using the ultimate to kind of soften them up a little bit, but they aren't going to be able to survive the tower, keep the tower alive. And there goes this first inhibitor. Next inhibitor is going to be down on the bottom, and everyone is still alive at this moment. Yep. Well, we've been in this clone forward, but look at this this huge minion wave. Ultimate not available for Faker Kappa, but here comes the dredge line onto the Nautilus, but there's just no damage. They can't get close enough to put down their DPS. Here comes the Pop Blossom oh. going forward using the Proto Belt but it's not going to be enough to get them all down. But when is rooted, is going to be able to dash away and Faker Kappa just cannot play the game. Poppy locks up the team against the wall and they're just being pushed back into their fountain and they can't go much further as the Nexus is just going to fall. But look at this, if you enjoy your step forward, looking for that ace. And oh. is going to get it. Penta <laughs> kill over to Yippie Enjoyer. They went hard in the paint. And game one, going to go over to TA Nebula. Oh man, incredibly what? Uh, slugfest. <laughs> well done, well done by TAN. It looked a little a little scary there. If I'm STN, I'm saying I take th I take this loss as a win just because of what they were able to accomplish. They they saw some weaknesses in the side lanes of both uh, uh in the top lane and the bot lane for TAN. So STN showed that hey, with a little aggression especially in the early game, this is something we could potentially do, just fix up some slip-ups and then have face kind of just more involved uh probably give them a little bit more attention or probably wave manipulate a little bit better where the side lanes are kind of are kind of bunched up the cs you know all the creeps they're there they're, there's multiple ways stacked and then leblanc could go ahead and just come uh come in and clear them to get really into the game because they just needed that last little bit of oomph of damage to really help them out in the in the mid game so uh, kudos to STN. They definitely were a lot closer than what I thought it should should have been. So TN has something to worry about. Uh, STN's no slouches, and uh, can't wait for game two. I'm excited. I, I, I want to see what what else they have in store. Yeah, I, I just thought it was such a big brain uh, play of them to give up those bans and to lock up those OP picks at the beginning. But it looks like they couldn't really play to those OP picks um, because the TA Nebula they just drafted a huge wall. It was the Great Wall of Nebula. And they just couldn't get through him. LeBlanc couldn't get through. Lee Sin couldn't get through. They do the damage. Gwen, in some instances, was able to get through. But it's just the meat shield was too much for them to dive. And they didn't have enough of a meat shield to protect their hyper carry Varus, who was going that on hit attack damage, just shredding build. Um, so yeah. their comp was just doing two different things. If they could just fix up their draft a little bit, I think with that same kind of aggression, they still could be able to make something happen in game two. Yeah, most definitely. I like the aggression was definitely a positive for STN. Uh, Octofu should have probably sat back a little bit more, not really look for engage, but potential peel. 
just because, like how you said, Kaisa was using the killer instinct to really get into uh, Baker Kappa's face and take him down, which was essentially all of the damage for STN. So, again, yep, I'm I'm, I'm excited for game two. I want to see what they're going to potentially change up in the draft. Are they going to go no bans again? I say ban Melio. <laughs> if you're not going to pick it up, just ban Melio. If you're going to stay on red side... Uh, leaving the Nico open is fine, but try to ban out some other things that could potentially be a counter to what you're looking forward to do. Like the Poppy would have been a nice ban. But uh, mm -hmm. they definitely know now that Poppy is going to be uh, picked up. And I'm pretty sure those two bans are going to be used wisely this this time around for stun gaming. And can't wait. Definitely. All right. Well, we're going to get into the game. We're going to get everything set up for you guys. So don't go too far. We'll be right back with the draft for game two of TA Nebula versus Stun Gaming Eclipse. Don't go too far.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're getting into draft for game two of the Dominate League, where we have TA Nebula sitting on top, uh, looking to secure their playoff spot against Stunned Gaming Eclipse, looking to make an upset and to ruin upset and ruin their day. Uh, after a kind of like a, a, a shift in game one, a little bit of a comeback, we saw some early aggression from Stun Gaming. They built up a pretty good lead, a pretty substantial freeze, but just somewhere along the way, just the cracks were just too big, and TA and Nebula were able to get through. So as we get into uh, draft number two, we're looking at the bands. We're going to see if Stun Gaming Eclipse looks to change some stuff around. They did switch sides, so Stun Gaming did take blue side this time, TA Nebula taking red side. And so far, we have the, the big bands of Annie, Nico, Ash, and Wukong. Uh, what can you tell us so far about these bands, Fantastic Fat Man? Well, Annie's a traditional pick. Uh, I know Annie has been most banned in LEC. Uh, just pretty much a solid, uh, a solid mage in the mid lane. Uh, point and click, potential of the stun, game-changing ultimate. You know, you could go ahead and uh, build the proto belt to smoothly get into a nice position. Or of course the flash bear, the tibbers, uh, just just all around good good pick. Wukong also a strong jungler, uh, potentially game changing ultimate as well. A lot of AOE, the knock up, and then also a smooth and uh, on the quicker side of jungle. But TAM being on the on the red side, they got to go ahead and make sure that SDN doesn't get the Nico. I probably would have challenged that <laughs> and let it yeah. leave it open just to see if they pick it up. Emilio up again, and they don't use their third band, which kind of disappoints me because then they go just first pick Mal Malkai. So now TAN could go ahead and potentially pick up the Emilio, uh, go for Kaisa again. Oh, they definitely like their Poppy, so they're going to go ahead and pick that up. I don't think the, um, uh, what is it, Nature's Grasp or? Yeah, Nature's w? Grasp. Twisted yeah, Advance is a W, Nature's Grasp is the R. Ah, there you go. Okay, so Twisted Advance. I don't think it's uh, blocked by the Poppy. So potentially they're going to go ahead and try to nullify the Lee Sin. But I didn't really see any Ws fully blocking the Lee Sin. Uh, Lee Sin was usually kind of being taken care of by the Nico in the mid lane. So mm -hmm. we'll see if it goes ahead and turns it around. Another aggressive uh, champion that I'm surprised they, they're, they're not looking for is Vi. Vi doesn't get stopped with her R, the Cease and Desist. But well, obviously the Vault Breaker uh, definitely can be taken down. Azir, I kind of like that. The aggression by STN could go ahead and get nullified. Azir's being brought back in a little bit more. Syndra, so face on Syndra is kind of nice. Uh, late game scaling. Going to go ahead and uh, have a, a, an out if it does go far into the, into, into the late game. Uh, and a solid pick all around. I've seen that he's that champion a lot more yeah so far so good on stn i think i like this draft a little bit more what, what well, are you feeling what are you feeling i'm i'm kind of stunned that they opt for the misfortune here instead of the varus faker kappa has 150 games of varus just this season alone um so it's definitely yeah. something that he's comfortable on and we saw that in the previous game as well uh maybe yeah. he feels like he needs the the use of his long range ultimate and just can't do anything besides that because, you know, the, the problem with their game or their team composition last game is everyone had to get in to do some damage, and now they're looking to go more range. You see the Syndra playing from a little bit more long range. You have the Misfortune playing from a little bit longer range as well. Um, but just kind of going back to the bands and talking about them a little bit, uh, Wukong EQQ is basically a, a Wukong one trick. So not one trick, but in solo queue he is. Uh, but Holy Banana has played 30 plus games on at least seven champions just in solo queue this season alone. So you're not going to be able to ban out that mid laner. Him picking the Azir, that playmaking champion, that DPS, that's still going to be huge for them. And Braum is going to be doing a lot to peel for his team. He can definitely stop the scatter of the weak coming out of the Syndra. Uh, can put up a very big shield against the bullet time. And going into round two, the Melio is finally banned away. Yeah. That could have been a potential for the MF. Uh, the, 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 syner the synergy isn't the greatest in the bot lane with Emilio, in my opinion, but it's still a good, uh, it's still a very good pick, especially in team fighting. You want to go ahead and get to the MF while she's bullet timing. So the Emilio goes ahead and help provides the peel, the, the, the speed, you know, the movement speed buff, and then also has the cleansing ultimate Raven in the bot lane. And Rakan is taken out, so. Um, Usually it's usually it's uh 
I was gonna say usually it's MF that's the counter to Draven. I think I was just talking to my brother about this. He's a little bit more skilled player. I was asking him bot lane matchups. I was like, who beats Draven? And then he was like, MF, but doesn't traditionally get picked. But he feels he feels MF could go ahead and position well, just because you kind of know where like the bouncing blades are going. That's that that's that's one thing that I'm assuming is what helps uh, MF out. Is Draven kind of has like the back and forth with the bouncing with the bouncing blades. Mm -hmm. You could probably set up nice cues, the crits, and then also just the range, and then yeah, just just kind of just just kind of like the one auto walk off kind of thing plays into MF. I'm assuming. Uh, also, Zaya Rakan take down the Draven, but doesn't go Draven goes Ezreal. Nice long range, potentially safe. Whatever the support is gonna be, I would say just pick up the Nautilus. He didn't do too bad. Probably roam a little bit more. Oh, they're going Maokai support. Ah, that's what it looks like. Yep. So we got Maokai support onto the MF. So that Nature's Grasp into the Bullet Time is kind of looking to be their setup. Uh, Cassante mm -hmm. is just a monster in the top lane at this moment, um, yeah. and the. Again, they have a sub top laner in, but you know, Cassante was something that they're used to playing with as far as the team composition goes, and he is just such a beefy person in the top laner. I don't know if you've seen that uh, copy pasta uh, that's yeah. going through <laughs> with the Cassante. <laughs> yeah, Showmaker's copy pasta, but it, it really does hit home. But a singe coming out is that going to be a top lane singe, a jungle singe? Uh, I hear some. Is that the singe from Arcane? Yeah, it's looking like a singed. Um, so we're gonna see if that goes top or jungle. I definitely don't think Brahm's going anywhere other than support right now. Um, but singe is gonna be really interesting. Singe in the top lane against Cassante. Uh, it's kind of fine. Cassante's just kind of gonna be able to farm. To be honest with you, I don't see how singe could get uh, get a real kill threat unless like Cassante's just kind of chasing around the singe, but. I think it's going to be free farm for Cassante in the top lane. And then also Cassante, um, I I don't hear too many people say he's a hard, or well, he's definitely a hard champ to the common player, but a little bit higher skilled, higher ranked uh, players don't really mention Cassante's difficulty to play. But I think he's one of those, uh, he's one of those champions like Jace, that unless you're extremely good on, on that champion, I say just stay away. Because that, that, that champion can make or break your game and unless you're 100 percent comfortable to the point where you could be back against the wall 1v2 and then make it out of a scenario you're not supposed to make it out of i say then that, that's fine pick up the Cassante. but if you're not that comfortable on that pick i always recommend do not pick that champion up so i'm interested to see maybe eli sg has something up his sleeve that i don't know about and uh i can't wait to see just because of the aggressiveness they had in the early game last game I want to see what they potentially have in store. This looks a little bit more traditional, and uh, I can still see him being aggressive just because of the Graves jungle. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Then he could vertical jungle. He could clear out. He bullies a lot of junglers. I think he could also bully out the Poppy uh, in the early uh, stages of the game. And the first 10 minutes of League of Legends is so important. So we'll see if... Uh, oh, oh, no, we haven't even started the game. I was going to say, are we already at time <laughs> to go into the game? But... Yeah, Graves. I, I can't. I, I I I can't see where Poppy kind of out jungles the Graves. Stn the his their their jungle jungler Cubics. He did pretty well in the beginning. So we'll see if Graves just kind of takes over, helps the Syndra be more involved. Face, aka Face, be more involved in this game. Uh, but the Azir is going to be a difficult champion to really be aggressive on, just because once he hits six, he has the Emperor's Divide and then pushes people out. And then potentially change around the team fight. I'm 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 interested. I'm interested for sure. Definitely more in this draft. Uh, I still think the singe the singe kills it for me uh, for TANs comp. I, I I choose STNs over TANs just because of that. But uh, that's that's just off of face value. Obviously, you got to include the players, how they played last game, what type of players they are. So, but yeah, uh, the I, I think it it's it's just how the the range if you kind of look at the range mf is kind of like a short range adc graves definitely short range Sindra, you know can kind of get a long range combo like with the scatter of the week but you know Cassante has to be up in their face so you're kind of running into that issue again with kind of getting to something like the azir or the ezreal 
And so for them to get onto the carries, they're going to have to go through the Singed Poison. They're going to have to try to get through the Poppy. They're going to have to try to get through the Braum again. So TA Nebula is kind of playing similar to what they did last time and the fact that, you know, it's it's going to be kind of hard to get to those carries. Uh, but the Singe, if he puts down his, I don't even know what to call it anymore, but basically the sticky stuff. If he puts the sticky stuff on the ground, it's going to be hard for Cassante to pull off that combo. It's going to be hard for Maokai even to get a Twisted Advance off. So it is really good counter engage to kind of keep that long range poke available with the Azir and the Ezreal. Um, but I see what you say in terms of like the, the short term. In the first like eight or nine levels of the game, I don't know how Singe is going to be able to really stack up against the Cassante unless he's going to be looking to play that feeding Singe that's going to be pinging between two towers. I hope we don't see that. <laughs> I, I honestly thought that would be a little bit too disrespectful on the side of TAN, but I mean, the, the little a little griefer might have something else in store. You know, his name might say something, a different side of him that is potentially waiting to come out, which is griefing on Singe. Uh, but uh, the, the skirmishes just look way better for TAN as far as like the rest of the comp goes. I mean, MF, Nature's Grasp is fine to, for a setup for bullet time. Uh, but you can't, I, I would recommend probably not playing front and back with the Maokai because you want to go ahead and get the extended snare, the longer, uh, the, the, the longer parts of, uh, nature's grasp lock you down for a longer time. If you kind of, if, if a poppy kind of runs in your face and you activate it, it's going to be like a 0.5 seconds with the tenacity that poppy assumingly builds. And then also Syndra's probably going to have to wait around MF. Azir could potentially dive in and, um... Uh, interrupt the bullet time so there's like a lot of things that could interrupt the bullet time so uh faker cap is gonna have a little bit difficult times uh and i'm kind of i'm uh, i'm kind of wishing he would have chose the virus a little bit more now that i'm kind of looking in thinking about okay how's the bullet time gonna get set up graves he could come in at an angle help out probably uh zone out this year probably try to take down the ezreal Cassante is another individual that could help you allow use the ultimate take somebody off across the walls <laughs> since poppy uh into a favorable matchup where he just goes 1v1 and has all that damage and all those resistances um Syndra as well can uh, once once it gets to the to the later part of the game mid game if he's quick has to execute uh on the ultimate so I'm just kind of thinking around, just seeing what potentially could occur. STN, TAN skirmishes looks a little bit better, and then just team fights front to back, maybe STN. But uh, it's, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. So I hope they get the advantages they did in the early game, like they did in the first game. Uh, that so, but yeah, like I said, TAN. T, uh, I mean, STN's draft over TAN's. Right, okay. I, I feel like it kind of just comes down to execution because they do have that yeah. burst potential coming out of the Grave, Syndra, and the Misfortune, especially if they end up going more of like a Lethality build than if they're going to go like for the traditional DPS build. Um, you know, if they're able to lock down the Azir or the Ezreal and get them down in like a second or a second and a half, then they're going to be able to kind of play out their fights from there and be at an advantage but just that range coming out of azir and ezreal i don't know if they're going to be able to execute cleanly enough for them to be able to take down that long range dps yeah, yeah, very true, very true. yeah. Huh? but you know like we, we saw last game how quickly things can turn around uh all it takes is just a couple of missteps all it takes is a couple of missed wards and all it takes is just a little bit of a lack of discipline for something like that to happen because in this elo when it comes to dominate you get dominated if you overstep so uh we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of an intermission kind of hear a little bit from the people who are supporting our stream and we'll be back in a couple of minutes once we get into the lobby so don't go too far uh fantastic fat man and myself will be back for you guys in a little bit to get going on game two of stun gaming versus ta nebula
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game two of Dominate Sundays, where we have TA Nebula versus Stunned Eclipse. Uh, and then just like last game, we saw a little bit of a dash through to the mid lane, this time coming out of the red side team. And uh, Cubic's getting a little into it at the very beginning. I don't know if we're going to see anything too crazy at the beginning of this game. No, I don't think so either. I think they're just kind of poking each other out and then they're going to walk off. Gray's going to recall, most likely go red buff, uh, do do basically bot the top. On the side, uh, CAN looks like potentially going to start top to bottom. I wonder yeah, if he, I, I, good. Uh -huh. No, I was just gonna say I wonder if he's really gonna try to engage onto the bot lane or help out uh help help out the Azir. Yeah, I know he understands Grace is better is a uh, is a higher tempo, better jungler, clear is better. Oh, they're both gonna match, they're both gonna go top to bot. So I was gonna say that could be a potentially defensive move. Graves uh usually Graves wants to go ahead and uh jungle invade after his first buff and immediately go to where poppy could potentially be clearing a little bit of poke there in the bot lane but uh it looks like grace is gonna go top to bot as well and i don't see any invade in sight unless he no no yeah he's just gonna go gromp i wonder if he three cams goes up to the top lane though to try to help out with the cinch just kind of like poke him down that way trades, because you know Sanj is gonna be walking around the Kasante, so Kasante's gonna be able to get a couple a couple of his Qs in. And uh yep, exactly that. Immediately Sanj hits level two, got the got the the what what is it called? The fling. And then uh got him out. Probably gonna go for it again. Oh no. <laughs> so the Sanj usually are a little aggressive, maybe not in their abilities, but how they walk in the lane. You gotta get in the enemy's face. To, to basically use that poison onto the, onto the CS. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big Great. damage coming out on the bot side too. Uh, we saw Faker Kappa go and putting some deeps onto the Ezreal, and we saw in the last game we had that as well, but little Weaver oh. stepping forward a little bit too far, forcing his flash out really early. And here comes Fly SG putting down so much damage in the solo oh. kill, just taking advantage of the aggression early on. Yep, so. Graves could have been there <laughs> if, if he three can to the top side, but uh, I mean, Kasante, well done. Eli SG, incredibly well done on him. Gets the first blood and the advantage. You do not want gold on Kasante, and you do not want any dead Kasante on the enemy side. So, very, yeah. very scary. Oh, oh, but twisted advance onto the Braum shield is going to be able to keep himself alive for a little bit longer. Um, but Singed ate two tower shots in the lead up to that solo kill. So you think just a little bit more discipline on that champion would have seen him be a little bit more successful. Yeah, but I mean, it's a Singed pick. He's definitely not looking to play respectfully. He's looking to just be in his face and kind of troll along the lane. And then uh, once it goes to like mid and late, I can see him just fully committing to a side, uh, a side lane and uh, split pushing. A little interesting. Poppy a little late getting to that Scuttle Crab. Uh, still had the Smite available, whereas Graves had the Smite down. And it's kind of interesting to see low Evo being late to the Scuttle Crab like that, or high Evo being late to the Scuttle Crab. It's not something you see very often. Well, Graves, uh, Gra Graves is a lot faster at clearing, so they both clear, full clear top to bot. So Graves should arrive to the Scuttle faster. And then Poppy being there, it's... That, it's bad for the poppy just because now grace could go ahead and double scuttle he helped shove the mid lane for syndra to force oh uh, in the bot lane we see some damage going down tick 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 goes the ezreal and yippee oh. enjoyer goes down in the 2v2 yet again holy banana yeah. putting down some return damage but look at that 2v2 uh unfortunate the kill does go over to the maokai but still just putting down that damage and crashing that wave gonna see a very big lead from the misfortune we'll see if the team can take that to their advantage, but EQ finds Graves on the wrong side of the jungle, doesn't get the stun onto the wall, but here comes the Singe just kind of playing defense right now, waiting for him. But Poppy is just oh, being nice. eaten alive right now, forced to hit the flash. The phase rush procs just a little bit too late, and a little griefer is griefing a little bit, trying to take this one kill, but here comes <laughs> Holy Banana getting a kill for himself. Actually, little griefer is going to be able to get that kill. So 2v1 overall. I thought Graves was caught out in a really good spot, but it just took so long for Singe to get there. 
Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, I, I, I kind of don't want to go rewind back. I don't want to lose my spot. But what was he doing? Was he just kind of sitting in the river and then hoping for the fight to come over to him? Well, he, he was warding. I don't think he was necessarily in lane, was he? He wasn't in lane. It looked like he was pathing down towards Raptors, like he was going to try to catch him leaving that way. And then they ended up pathing back up towards the top lane where Cassante was. Uh, uh, that's that's either miss misstep by by EQQ, walking the opposite direction where his help is, or just oh. kind of like a misstep by the Singe. Oh, There's wait. the damage. That was a good combo from Cuddly Kitten, but Yippie Enjoyer just didn't have his Q available or didn't have the follow up to get that stun. A uh, little bit of a missed opportunity on that bot lane. Here comes the twisted advance forward lands oh, wow. on the Hiskili Cutting. And he's just eating so much damage off of this at the very beginning. Yeah, that that cuddly kitten is being a little too aggro, especially when they have the deficit. Oh, top lane, top lane. Uh, no. All right. <laughs> and you, you just take a look at the item difference in the bot lane too. Like Ezreal went tier longsword, so he can kind of go for that scaling build. And Misfortune right away has that serrated Dirk, so has the lethality, so it definitely has the kill pressure early on in this lane. Most definitely. I mean, you're gonna go lethality because you're just gonna go full bullet time damage. Ooh, channeling. Yep, hex flash forward. The shield is gonna be up, trying to keep him alive. Misfortune does have the make it rain available, but is not gonna be able to get him down. But Yippie Enjoyer just taking so much damage. He flashes backwards. Twisted advance takes him under the tower. One more auto attack is gonna see Faker Kappa live. Meanwhile, in the river, Sindra getting the kill onto Poppy. Six to one so far, and Stun Gaming and Clips come out the gate swinging today. Two and a half thousand gold lead at seven minutes. Oh yeah, I think TAN is being a little disrespectful to STN on here. I mean, just 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 uh, cut of the kitten stepping up a little bit too much in the bot lane, not like not fully processing that. Hey, the Ezreal is severely mismatched with the damage. Serrated Dirk on to uh, onto the MF. And then only having a tier goddess and one longsword, you don't have the damage to really back up any kind of engage. Oh! Oh, I and thought I was fucking the top lane! <laughs> and he was going all out. You saw he went unstoppable, and when he was unstoppable, Singe used the fling, so wasn't able to displace the Cassante. And then the ultimate just saw him go all out onto the Singe, and Singe went all out to his gray screen. Oh, man. Oh, no, <laughs> that happened like a lot quicker. I was kind of like looking around the map, and uh, did not see that the top lane was fighting. Yo, that and they got the early lead again. This time a little bit more. They're up 3k gold, so it's a little bit more. No missteps in sight. The Sheen has been bought by Yippie Enjoyer, so a whole lot of poke on Octoku just right there. We'll see if they can go ahead and match up, Vicar Kappa. So this is around the minute mark where they started kind of uh, me messing up, misstepping, having a couple mistakes, and then TAN was able to come back into the game. We'll see if this this game is a different story. They were able to pick up the Hextech Drake there. Um, Graves, after Graves basically took down Poppy in the in the river as bot lane was taken down. Oh, nice bullet time. Yeah, bullet time used. And look at that, the ultimate oh. true shot for Rogers lands onto the Maokai, follows up with the E forward and takes him down with the auto attack. Um, so Ezra being able to take down that damage to being down 0-2, the sapling is gonna keep Faker Kappa alive, slows Poppy down just enough for him to get out. They're gonna be able to crash the wave on the bot side, and Ezreal, now that he has that Sheen available, he just has to poke him down with Q over and over and over again. But Azir gets hit by the Scatter of Weak, and here comes the full combo from the Syndra. Shield is not gonna be enough to keep him alive, and that is a solo kill onto Holy Banana. Nice, phase getting into the mix here. That's another different story as well. FaZe couldn't really get any gold or significant gold uh, in the first game on the LeBlanc, so didn't really have the damage to game change. Oh! Yeah, it goes forward from the Misfortune, just walks right by the Braum, and Braum says, see ya, Ezreal, flashes over the wall to keep himself <laughs> alive, and is now going through the enemy base. Ghost is still crocked onto the Misfortune right now. Is he gonna be able to get alive? Uh, get out not alive but he's gonna be able to get away we'll see if he's gonna be able to get the execute he does so he denies the goal good job right there but meanwhile on the mid lane we see graves is going forward putting down the damage onto the poppy poppy knocks him back into tower range forces the flash off of the graves but still just a 4,000 gold lead after 10 minutes we see big damage onto the azir he uses the shuffle oh. to go forward but misses the wall 
a little bit of a misplay from Holy Banana. Yeah, Holy Banana. But, I mean, high risk, high reward. So, <laughs> gonna use the Emperor's Divide, not really a crazy risk. Uh, try to knock back the Graves. Graves immediately knew it. Was able to dash on out of the way. And, uh, oh, Fling again. Looks like Eli SG is finding his rhythm there in the top lane. Anytime Fling comes in, he's on his unstoppable uh, frames and uh, able to able to out damage him, out maneuver him there. The Fling being canceled though, is that the? I saw the damage still proc through. Am I? Am I? Is that a mistake that I saw? No, I the damage still goes through. It's just he can't be displaced. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but I mean, if you only have one, oh, mid lane. And look at that damage flash for flash in the mid lane. Holy Banana almost able to get the solo kill onto the Syndra right there. Is going to be able to push in that wave. Teleport is available for both mid laners. They're going to be able to go back and get back and collect this farm. And here comes Poppy dashing uh -oh. forward. Twisted advance last and he smashed it backwards. Here comes the true shot, but Rajba is sidestep by Awkward Tofu. And here comes Faker Kappa. The teleport is coming in from the mid lane. Syndra is here. We'll have the scatter of the week available. Lands onto the Braum and Braum's going to be able to dash away. Holy Banana teleports to answer as well, but with no ultimate Emperor's Divide available, going to be forced to walk away as well. So he's going to go ahead and collect this bot lane farm as he gets pushed up. Uh, but Graves is going to be free to kind of farm his jungle. Going to invade probably Poppy's jungle right now. And overall, explosive team fight, but no kills. Well, I would have liked him to shove the mid wave instead and then go over to the Raptors because he's going to be able to dominate the uh, the Poppy even if they do meet in the Raptors and they uh, both like collide there. Uh, potentially dangerous just because like the rest of the team can go there, but I would rather have him shove reset the wave for the Syndra and then he goes ahead and hits level 9 and I think you get a lot more experience from your jungle camps from level 9. Oh, so possible would've... dive. Eli SG goes forward, goes all oh. out, putting down the damage. Here comes the flash forward, a little bit of a misplay and a shutdown oh. on the Cassante as his follow-up damage took him into tower range. EQQ is going to be there to cover the wave as the little Gweefer catches Eli SG Gweefing himself. Yeah. <laughs> <That's a laughs> Yo, unfortunate for, for TAN. So like I said, game one, this is around the minute mark where they started kind of making mistakes. And also TAN was able to capitalize off of certain, certain things. And now right there, a little bit of misplay in the top lane. Uh, bonus over to the Singe. Singe is fully going to go Rallyze, boost, boost the swiftness, and then most most certainly he's going to go uh, Leandre's Demonic Embrace, that kind of build where you just slowly melt the, the enemy team no matter what resistances and uh, health they have. But they're kind of speedrunning Dragon here. STN able to pick up the Drake. Good. Oh, and it's Infernal Drake. So this is a good goal to rush. If they're, if they're able to keep up the tempo on these objectives, that's going to be extremely good for STN and it's going to be putting TAN on their heels. But, uh, yeah, so far, lane state, I mean, I mean, a game state, STN, not out of the woods, but still has the upper hand. Uh, TAN looking like there are no slouches, there are no pushovers, even with a little bit of the disrespectful play in the early game. They're, they're, they're looking to really come back. Yeah, with that gold advantage, like you saw Poppy was collecting the top lane farm that was pushed in, you know, because uh, Singe had to go back, and while they were collecting the farm, Graves went straight down. They were able to collect that second dragon of the game. So really kind of keeping their foot on the gas pedal. They just got to make sure they don't overstep and make those same mistakes they did last time, and they should be able to kind of scale into a, a situation of the game where they should be able to kind of take it down. Yeah, definitely. Just thinking, what could potentially be the... In right now, they, they they did lose the top turret. Oh, no, no, no. It's just Singe proxying the wave. Sorry about that. Yeah, oh, just Singe doing Singe things. <laughs> but he is stepping forward a little bit too far. As Look, three people are collapsing onto him. Cassante is going to go all out. Ghost is popped. Ultimate is popped. And here comes a little Gweefer. He puts down the uh, stickiness, but it's not going to be able to keep Maokai off of him. There's the Ignite. And a little Gweefer is just running as fast as his little legs will carry him. Here comes the Braum going forward. Where's that wall, Braum? Put it up! Oh! He's able to block the Graves ultimate and Singe is able to get out alive. Oh man, that's that's a lot of resources. <laughs> a whole lot of resources. Widow Griefer is uh <laughs> definitely playing with fire there, but incredibly well done. A lot of resources now is there's something that they could go ahead and capitalize off of. They're gonna go ahead and siege. Could potentially go top, they could potentially go bot, and uh where CDs last a little longer. And also on top of that, bounty 
bounty gold, the, the comeback gold is on line for uh, TAN. So any misstep for for from STN is going to be that much more detrimental. If they're able to capitalize off of two, three of those turrets, it's TAN's game. Oh, look at, oh, this. But look at this engage. Braum tries to go back, is forced to flash. And Ezreal is going to tank up that Ooh. damage, takes up the ultimate. Great sidestep from Faker Kappa. Forced to use the ghost to get out of there. Here comes Azir, uses the Emperor's Deride. It's going to be a one for one so far. EP Joyer forced to flash out as well. Poppy a little bit late to the explosive team fight on the mid lane, but Ezreal is still alive. But if he eats one combo, that could spell disaster for him. Oh, yeah. Oh, so close to landing. Oh, that yeah. tower is not long for this world, though. It just takes a couple more auto attacks from the Syndra, and there it goes. Oh, I'm surprised. Oh, okay. Face, face understood. Face understood. EQ was coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah and Poppy going man mode goes into the middle of a smoke screen. He's being collapsed on by three. Does not have the flash available. Look at that. Graves just dashes over the side, flashes over the wall to take down wow. Yippie Enjoyer. Syndra takes down the Poppy as well. And just like that, 13 to 4, 6,000 gold lead onto the side of Stunned Eclipse Gaming. Well done by STN. I mean, they're still in. They're, 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 they're still in the driver's seat of this game. And even though they have a couple of mistakes, a little mishaps, they're still looking to be aggressive. Well done. Picked up two kills in the previous fight before that. And now another two kills here. It looks like it's. I don't want to cast a crystal, I'm, I'm, but I was going to say it's their game to lose a Widow Griefer, griefing a Widow Wit. <laughs> That's just so disgusting that I'm saying it like that. But <laughs> MF, uh, they're in the bot lane. Could have potentially got the bot turret. They don't. Probably going to recall set up for Dragon since it's going to be up in 53 seconds. Usually a minute before is when you want to be there to set up. And uh, it is a very important Dragon for them to close out this game. Yeah, the crazy thing is there's so much standing gold still left on the map for stand or stun gaming to get they still have the top and the bot outer turrets to take down third dragon of the game is going to be spawning within the next minute or so so a lot of neutral objectives to still play for they just got to keep their foot on the gas pedal and stop the other team from scaling um it's just kind of crazy how long that fight was going ta nebula just kind of playing with their food and just sticking around a little bit too much they have to be a little bit more disciplined if they want to be able to keep themselves in this match his eq is just eating so much damage yeah most definitely ta like i'm saying yeah like i said before you did it uh -oh. yourself right now oh. there we go flash foot forward from the oh. sin she's gonna try to keep him down and Cubix is going to be able to get away so far. Scatter of the Week keeps one person alive. But there is no Ezreal. He's a little late getting there. Here comes the True Shot Barrage. It's going to land on the lot. But is it going to be enough? It doesn't look like it is. A little Gleefer is doing his best to kind of peel. Here's the bullet time. Just Ooh. shredding apart the enemy team. And Yippee Enjoyer is in Jeep enjoying a lot of bullets. So far, a three for three. So an equal team fight overall. Yep. I'm surprised they were able to pull it out like that. A little Gleefer <laughs> still just kind of... Reed Jennings, he steps forward. Faker Kappa does have the movement speed to keep himself alive and into safety. Oh. Cassante's over the wall. Teleports are available on Cassante and Syndra. No teleports available on the side of TA Nebula. So they can respawn. They can go straight to this dragon and take it down. Yeah, I kind of like this by Faker Kappa. Shoving in the mid lane, forcing EP to respond. They're going to go ahead and go over. Cassante has teleports. Singe still has a recall, doesn't have TP. And Holy Banana is going to be coming up with TP on cooldown. So this is their dragon. Yep, looks like they're going to concede it. Yeah, they have to give it up. And Singe put a lot of minions into the bot lane. Not enough to take down the tower, though. So he still has that local gold available for his team when he's able to get up. But we are on Infernal Soul Point. In about five minutes, we're going to see the timer tick. And you do not want that Infernal Slow going over onto a team as explosive as an MF, Syndra, and Graves. Yeah, most definitely you don't. Right there, it got a little sloppy. They just kind of got all bunched up. Azir was able to get a very good Emperor's Divide. Syndra goes down. I think used the ultimate on the tank. Didn't 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 really confirm anybody. But at the same time, was about to, was about to get taken down. So I understand just kind of like spamming the R, making sure you get the damage out there before you get the gray screen. Uh, and then also Graves went down pretty quick after that Emperor's Divide. So they took down a lot of damage immediately there that helped them basically go even in that fight. And obviously when you're behind and you go even, that's incredibly good for you. Uh, but nonetheless, they lose out on the Inferno. 
And look at all this damage onto the bot lane. Singe has to be a little bit more careful. Um, interestingly enough, he does not go Rylai second. So he's not able to play that front line as effectively as he would like to. Yeah, he's going to burn away any tanks that kind of come to match him. Um, but I really would have liked to see that Rylai so he could play a little bit more of a front line for his team. Yeah, uh, what's it called? And also provide CC just running around, right? Slow, slow. I'll play. Yeah. And there's that Emperor's Divide, able to keep Holy Banana safe and alive. But that's one ultimate for none right here, is the teams are all a little late to get to this wave, so the play is already done. Next objectives on the map are going to be Baron and just basically some neutral uh, jungle camps at this moment. Standing gold available in the top wave. Syndra and Gray is going to be able to knock it down. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Ezreal stepping forward, trying to get the poke down onto Ezreal. Lands the nature's grasp. And look at that. Faker Kappa wow. just goes up and two taps him. Goes unstoppable. 5 0 oh, 3 so far in this game. Yeah, and I'm interested on in what he's going to build with that last whisper. If he's going to go for the slow or if he's going to go ahead and go for the Lord Doms. Merriman already online. Ghost Blade, you know, after the rework is a very nice item. OP at one point. Braves really doing them a lot here, in my opinion. I mean, kudos to Cubix. Before he had he, he had that advantage in the early game. Oh, they're going for Baron. They are going for the Baron. TP is available for Cassante. They spot Singed in the bot lane. So at best, it's going to be a 5v4. Ezreal was coming off of a gray screen, so they know the timing is optimal for them right now. Are they going to look to 50-50 at Poppy? Does have the flash available, does have vision, but Octofu goes over the side of the wall and stops the Poppy oh. from getting in. And here comes the rest of the fight over the edge of the wall in the Baron pit. And Stun Gaming Eclipse takes down the Baron. They're going to use the Empowered Recalls to get out. Wow. Well done by SDN. <laughs> Understood that they had a window, a tight window, and they made the most of it. Oh. That would have been scary if Gray's got 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 uh, stopped, <laughs> his recall stopped. But yeah, they had a tight window and they they did an incredible job of making sure they took advantage of that. They weren't scared, like you said, Singe, no TP. He was in the bot lane, seeing Ezreal coming off a gray screen. That was their moment and they took advantage of it. Here in the mid lane. Yeah, they're trying to take down the tower to get some damage back, but they just overstep. And that arcane shift backwards and the flash is going to be followed up by the twisted advance. TP Enjoyer is going to be able to get a kill for himself. But the Yomu's Ghost Blade just sees Cubix walk forward and collect a kill for himself. So a two for one as a TA just overcommit a little bit too much for that mid turret. Definitely, Sanj. Still committing to the split push there. <laughs> oh, Poppy trying to ult away the tower to keep it alive or at least ult away the minions. But here comes all of the damage. They're going to be able to kite it out. But the minions are still going to be there. Sanj heading towards the mid lane probably to try to cut the wave. And it's if you're playing that singe style right now, you got to be able to play behind your team to be able to cut their advantages and stop them from being able to siege on your team's base. Yeah. And again, uh, I think I think he, he messed up on the on the build. I, I, I'm thinking that too. Rod of Ages. I mean, it, the the continuous uh, the continuous fighting style, I guess, helps out obviously with like the mana restore and then also just the ability uh, power. I think right. Um, the, 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 oh, the... some damage on the Tofu right there. He just gets popped like a zit as he goes down. <laughs> and right away, there's a TA Nebula 4 for 5 advantage with the Infernal Dragon coming up in 20 seconds. This is soul point. Yeah, to uh, Tofu creating an awkward situation there. 4v5. This looks oh, like look at that. Grace looks up a little too far, too. Gets caught by the stickiness of the Singe. Gets flinged into his team and into the Ooh. depths of hell he goes. And that's going to be the Infernal Dragon first drag of the game going over to TA Nebula. And Singe oh. is just running with the rest of the team right there. Uh, and he's kind of running into the middle of all of them. Here comes Yippee Enjoyer just stepping up to put down some damage as well. And he's just pushing them back away from the dragon just to make, their, just make sure they can secure it. That's actually pretty good by a Widow Griefer. It looked like they were trying to respawn up in the top lane. They have a build, uh, they, they have a, uh, a wave building there. They could have potentially answered back. But they're forced to stick around mid just because it delays their transition over to the top side and then allows them to get Infernal Drake with the two members that they had. And then also threatens the mid uh, the mid turret and with the bounty still up. Oh. Flash forward, twisted advance, lands onto the Ezreal, gets caught by the nether grass as well. Here comes the pull time from downtown. Yippee Enjoyer gets the shield and is going to be able to walk away with just a slither. Hopefully, Faker Kappa one taps him to get him down. 
Uh, Ezreal is able to answer back the kill, so it's an ADC for support right now. Here comes the step forward from face, lands the combo onto one oh. and two, is able to get a kill for himself onto the support. So overall, a one for two so far. No neutral objectives to speak of, but they are going to mount down mid lane, possibly for the tower. No, they're going to go ahead and hit this recall. They opt for the tempo reset instead. I like it. Just because you don't want to go ahead and brute force way down, this is going to be a Nazir who's going to be able to wave clear. Plus, you have the Poppy to potentially stop any kind of sieging or tower diving in on the tower on the inhibitor turret. Plus, the Emperor's Divide. Just recall. Go ahead and come back. But the vision, uh, uh, they should play vision a lot more. They have that advantage. There are like almost no blue wards uh, on the on the map. Uh, STN has has barely any vision. I feel like this is something they could capitalize off of. Uh, speaking of TAN, we'll see if they can. A little griefer sticking around up in the top side. Let's go ahead and split push. The the rest of the team kind of got to stick together. I mean that's what helped them out so much. Is EQ was always there with the poppy. Anytime they got aggressive, he made sure to answer back. Yippee and, uh, Yippee and Joyer was able to secure the kill onto Faker Kappa every single time. Doesn't have a champion that quite necessarily does that. And they got to be careful because in this game, face is, uh, is, is a threat, is a problem. Able to half, just take away half health of some of your front line. Uh, it was just, just one combo. <laughs> that's that's got to be scary. Yeah, going back to what you said on the advantage for the tempo, I would have liked to have seen them use that opportunity to kind of move into their red side quadrant and kind of like get down wards at the very least if they're not able to take some buffs. Because, yeah. I mean, what's the what's the use of getting in the advantage if you don't take anything from it, you know? Definitely. But yeah, yeah. game state right now, 27 minutes into it. We have the Infernal Soul coming up in about two minutes. Baron is going to spawn in a minute yet again. A 7,000 gold lead, 7,500 gold lead onto Stun Gaming. But remember, they had a significant gold lead in game one, and they gave it up. It was a little bit smaller than this, but it looks like they're having a little bit of trouble closing out the game at the current moment. Yeah. They got to be careful. They just got to go for the old con and con squeeze. Oh, there's oh, Poppy. Oh, there we go. Poppy misses the sun up against the wall, and here comes the big damage from the Syndra, and just gets oh. bursted into oblivion is the Poppy. So right away, a big disadvantage, no jungler. That should be a free Baron in about 20 seconds. Oh, bot lane, Holy Banana. Oh, they're going into it. Holy Banana forced to try to kite him away, uses the Emperor's Divide to kind of get him back as he does not have the Unstoppable available. The flash forward from Eli SG, he goes forward, does not land the Q. Holy Banana does have the Rylize available, but he's not going to be able to put the damage down, sidesteps the other knockup. Does he have his passive available he does he should be able to have the dash pretty soon flashes the damage is able to shuffle away there's the blast cone and holy banana going to keep himself alive as the rest of the team on the other side of the map are going to be able to take the baron for themselves so being able to put that pressure down onto the azir stopping him from being able to get a big emperor's divide it's going to be huge cross map play as the baron is secured by stunned eclipse gaming yeah, they're playing a lot better. The they, they they definitely tidied up their macro. They're tidying up their gameplay. And it's looking like TAN just chose a wrong game to kind of play disrespectfully in the in the early game. And I wouldn't say it's too disrespectfully. I feel like I'm using that word kind of lightly. Uh it's just it's just they're 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 a little sloppy, you know what I mean? They're not really dotting their I's crossing their T's. But uh it looks like they're 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 definitely focusing up now, Singe kind of sticking around. EQQ looking to go ahead and potentially catch a member of STN. Oh, oh yeah, flashes go. around and lock up the Grace, puts him up against the wall, and Grace is stunned over the wall. And his Kelly Kid and gets the kill, but here comes the Singe on the back line, just kind of wreaking havoc on them. They land the stun off of the Braun passive, and they're going to be able to take them down as Poppy goes forward onto the Maokai as well as Tofu should eventually fall. Singe is able to go on a killing spree, gets down one, not able to take down Yippie and Joyer with the ultimate. Oh. And here comes the E forward oh. trying to get the kill and does not get the snipe onto the Q. But that's going to be another Infernal Dragon that can go the way of TA Nebula Gaming. Just because Graves oversteps a little bit. It, it, it'll be like that. And then and towards the later part of the game, the mistakes are that much more detrimental, right? Mm -hmm. the, the respawn the respawn times start hitting 30, 40 seconds. And 40 seconds of just no bodies on the map, TAN could do as they please. And here, they're delaying the soul point. And not only are they delaying the soul point, they are stacking Infernal Drakes. If they even get three... That's already a a win just because of how they were how how 
quick in the game, they were down to slow points. So they're up plus 10 uh, percent damage. I'm not sure. Actually, uh, I kind of went brain dead. Uh, do do they they uh, do they stack or is it just goes five percent after that calculates is another five percent? I think I, it's that way, right? I believe so. Yes. There's no way it stacks into ten percent, but if it does, I mean, even worse, even worse for STN. But yeah, a widow griefer. Uh, EQQ. Uh, he he went ahead and engaged it. That's kind of what they did in game one. I like that. Uh, I like that he was looking for a play. Went ahead and flashed, used it. The rest of the team knows how to follow up, and even though they were down. What almost almost 10k gold? Hey, they were able to capitalize off of that. They didn't really get a, a fa figure cap. Couldn't really get a good bullet time. They caught Cinder lacking up in the top lane. Face was stuck up there. T TP pretty late. They need to keep looking for plays like that, especially since they don't have the summoners to really match uh, STN. So them sticking together is fine. Oh. Yeah, and Singe steps forward and is able to get the fling onto Cubic. Mm. So the rest of the team is not there to follow up on the engage. And he goes down, so a little Gweefer stepping up a little too far. They're going to go ahead and push in the wave and kind of get back. Big slow from the two-shot barrage from the Ezreal lands onto the team. So they're going to walk away. They don't have the minion wave to step up in Siege yet again. But they're going to be looking to push up in other aspects in these lanes to try to get another advantage and to make use of this man uh, power that they have right now. Yeah, we'll definitely weep. a little bit. Uh <laughs> That's so disgusting. Sorry. They're here sieging into the mid inhibitor. And then also Baron coming up in two minutes. So it's something they could just go ahead and toy with. If they keep shoving each lane. There's still a inner top turret that they could potentially get. Just just to go ahead and confirm that standing gold. The rest of the jungle is there. Yeah, so they just got to keep shoving all the waves. And uh, yeah, again, right there, they're detriment. They're not all on the same page. TAN's not all on the same page. Uh, a little griefer went for a fling when his team wasn't there. I mean, that's the right play, in my opinion, if his team is there. But unfortunately, his team is not there. So obviously, bad play. And uh, I think they should give it to EQQ as far as the driver's seat, as far as the decision maker on who they're going to capitalize off of. A poppy going in with the wall, with, the, with his W. His uh, steadfast presence, uh, just so much, much more threatening. Onto the onto the stun, knocks him down for two seconds. Uh, it's that that's a little bit of better play in my opinion. And then Sans just running him up, chaos in the back line. That's that's what I would be looking for about CAN. Yeah, and that was just an incredible play catching that Graves down there before the dragon fight. Just instant snap flashed onto him and put him up against the wall so the rest of the team can follow up and get that burst down. Yeah. Should be the, the the decision maker on when to engage. Looks like they're, they they follow him up very well. All right, we have two big objectives coming up right now. Baron less than a minute, Dragon a minute and a half. So teams are stepping up to posture and look at all these wards and all this vision that's going up on the blue side jungle of TA Nebula Gaming. Uh, they have a couple entrances warded, but they don't have it lit up nearly as much as a Christmas tree would like to be lit up. Uh, before these dragons come up. It looks like they're going to prioritize the dragon soul because this is going to be the uh, third attempt at a dragon soul right now. Um, but most of the times in the past, it's just been people getting caught before the fight. So we're going to see if they're going to play a little bit more on the edge, a little bit more reserved. Uh, basically keep track of everybody before they go ahead and step up and get these engages or look for some little mini trades. Yeah, most definitely. Go through mid. Go ahead and make sure... Dot your eyes, cross your teeth, go mid, don't go through jungle, cuddly kitten, be careful, because a curious cat. And there he is, stunned, locked up, and scattered of the week sends Braum back to retirement as they are able to go up right away. It is just a support that goes down, but that is a big kind of AoE support that they're blocking down. Uh, hopefully they don't get too aggressive as Singe is going to be able to cut the wave, and right now he has backline access. If he's not careful, they're going to give up the dragon priority as it's about 20 minutes. But here comes some big damage onto the Syndra. Ooh. Uses the Zhonyas to try to take away some of the damage, but the Emperor's Divide is still going to be available for Holy Banana. And here comes the front to back team fight as they are just not on the same page. Ooh. Misfortune and Graves were all the way on the other side, but look at that flash forward. There goes the fling. There's the Emperor's Ooh. Divide. There's a big team fight win. They step forward, trying to get it down. Ezra gets the shutdown on the Misfortune. 
SG goes down as well. And so far, everyone is still alive. They're eating a lot of damage, but four people are still alive. That is a huge ace. That's 30 second death timers across the way. And from a 10,000 gold deficit, we're gonna see TA Nebula take the team fight victory. Not only the gold mm -hmm. deficit, they had the people deficit as well. And that's going to be the win. They take down the Nexus turret number one. They take down Nexus turret number two. And that's going to be the victory for TA Nebula going five and one on the season and getting that much closer to playoffs. Wow. TA They're a threat. They're a threat in the playoffs. If, 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 I'm going to, if I'm a team that's going to the playoffs, I'm researching TA and I'm 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 definitely thinking about the holy banana, cause holy hell, yo holy. <laughs> when I think of holy banana, I think of like a golden banana, kind of like a Minecraft, or <laughs> just adds extra health to you, so you make sure you don't die. <laughs> uh, that's what holy banana is basically to this team, cause incredible job, just being so patient with the emperor's divide, and then finally found his his way. I'm looking at the replay over onto the stream that that fight. They 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 caught out Cuddly Kitten. It was theirs, but they kind of got lost in the sauce, right? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Yeah. They just had to play it a little bit more slowly because <laughs> Graves was stepping up, I think, with the Cassante or someone around the Raptors, and Misfortune wasn't yeah. anywhere even close. Uh, or oh. I don't think it was Graves. I think it was Misfortune and Graves were together on the back line. The rest of the team was fighting at the Raptor pit, and they just were not on the same page. So it should have been a 5v4 turned into a 2v4 because they were just not going the right way. Maybe they were just auto-pathing, and just the little slip of concentration saw them fall and give up that huge... Right, uh, substitute yes, on the top lane. So them doing that well with the top lane sub, somebody that's not that really wasn't theirs. This series could have potentially been theirs, but uh, the the ban. <laughs> Why didn't they use their ban? They could have banned Poppy because <laughs> that was such a key. That was such a key champion in this. Uh, uh, that was such a key champion for their victories. Uh, speaking of TAN, and this season we're getting interviews, right? Do you want to do? Do you want to bring in Holy Banana? If we do get interviews? Uh, I'm down for whoever. I thought we were doing interviews only for playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, I don't... Actually, are they still in there? There's Michigan. There's so Hold on, Chile. we're getting... Uh, we're, 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 uh, we're asking, we're asking. Just to be a little bit patient. But yeah, just... Oh, okay, we got the yes. Is Holy Banana still available? I think they're all in there. I... That'd be good. I mean, even a little Gweefer, even EQQ, like going so far down behind in the jungle, but still finding those imperative picks. Like, I just so, think about how instantaneous that flash push up against the wall for Graves was before that second try at Infernal Soul. That was just an amazing snap decision by him. Definitely. Any of them. Yeah. I'll take any of the guys, to be honest. <laughs> All right, right. Yeah, so yeah, most definitely. I think, uh, yeah, just EQQ... Just being there, being just his timing, one hundred percent was a key to their victory. Um, I feel like the rock was holy banana, and then a widow griefer. Even though he did have a couple of mistakes in some detrimental parts of the game, ah man, it didn't really matter because he really made the most of those of those team fights where they were able to turn it around. Oh, we got holy banana. Hello. I see holy carrot. Is this holy banana as well? <laughs> yes. Are we having that a fruit is. identity crisis? Okay. Yeah, that's correct. All right, man. Hey, so congratulations on the 2-0, and then congratulations on being one step closer to securing your playoff spot. I mean, how does it feel going out of a 35-minute game right there? Because you guys were definitely in a hole. Um, you know, what was kind of the environment like to kind of keep you guys in the game? Like, what was that one play where you guys were like, okay, we can get back into it? Um, Definitely uh, my teammates, you know, carrying me through those tough times, especially uh, our singed, a widow griefer, you know, flipping the MF all the time, and uh, EQQ landing that insane uh, pick on Graves, that one dragon fight. It was uh, definitely a great moment for the comeback. 
And so when you guys got caught, oh, go ahead. Yeah, his, his cuddly kitten, I mean, Brom got caught kind of in the jungle when he was stepping forward. And so you guys were at a 4v5. Um, who was it that made that call to go on to that 2v4 when you kind of caught them separating? Like, what was that last team fight like? Uh, I wouldn't say it was like a call that we made. We just wanted to, we had to fight there because we were going to lose if we just gave Baron or Dragon. And they ended up like trying to pick us off, like the Syndra tried to like pick me off and uh of course our poppy came in clutch and landed an ultimate on like both of their carries graves and mf and then that was like the opening for us to fight that 4v5 so it was really clutch from our uh, poppy our jungler oh is, is eqq your guys like in-game leader is he the one who's like shot yes, calling of course of course he's he's our captain he uh he's elite uh, okay yeah, so I'm now sh- we know for playoffs who to, who to bring in <laughs> Most definitely. Hey, and kudos for that ultimate, because I thought you, you they just got caught slipping and the MF and Graves are just kind of hanging out somewhere else uh, when that fight was going on. So being able to ult both of the carries away and kind of open up that uh, opportunity for you to go in. Like, I saw you hold that Emperor's Divide at the end, too, when Syndra uh, went golden. I mean, that, that was just clutch and so disciplined when you did that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so just... Okay, so... We're... The the singe pick is that not, is that an actual pick or were you guys actually kind of kind of griefing a little bit the draft on the second game? Um, you know I don't want to reveal our secret technology, but uh, let's just say you guys will be seeing more singed in the future. All Thanks. right, sure. you heard it here first. So people listening on draft, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, what was your reaction when they went through game one, not banning two of their champions, and then in game two, not banning one of them? I mean, did you guys think that was a little troll or uh, like because you were able to pick up the Nico at the very beginning? Um, you know, how did you guys kind of discuss that and adjust your draft accordingly? Uh, I mean, I think they only got one ban because of uh, they had to use an e sub. Uh, it it was weird that they banned out Wukong because I think that champion is like giga nerfed. Um, yeah, leaving up Nico like I, I don't know. It's just I, I feel like the champion is just broken, so I, I just pick it whenever it's up. So I don't know. Wait, do you get to play it much? Uh no, actually, because it's so broken. <laughs> like everyone bans it, but I think she got nerfed like this last patch, so people are starting to let it through more. So uh, I've been I've been playing it a lot more. It looks like it's still a threat, especially in your hands. <laughs> yeah. All right, excellent. Well, hey, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come interview uh, with us and chat it up. And best of luck for the rest of the season. We can't wait to see you in playoffs. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. It was a great stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for myself and Fantastic Fat Man. We want to say thank you guys so much for hanging out with us during Dominate Sundays. And for these banger of a games, we saw early invades. We saw gold leads. We saw team fights. We saw massive plays, massive outplays, and even bigger throws in some spots. But uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. Fantastic Fat Man, do you have anything else to add? No, oh, it was incredible, incredible series. 2-0, but didn't feel like a 2-0. It felt like a three-game series. <laughs> I know, it, it really did with the kind of tension they put us through. So just stick around for a couple more weeks. We have, I believe, one or two more weeks of regular season, and then we're going to move into the playoffs. Remember, the top four teams from each group are going to advance into the playoff bracket with some pretty good money on the line for first and second place. So make sure you guys stick around. Keep tuning in. If you haven't dropped a follow already, make sure you do so to keep in the loop of everything happened in eSports, Arisen eSports, Dominate Sundays, and check out our other leagues on Friday and Saturday as well. Um, But for Fantastic Fat Man, uh, myself, and the one War Eagle who is behind the scenes on production, we want to say thank you guys so much for sticking around. We will see you guys next time.